Welcome once again. Right now we're at John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. We're touching on the subject of why the gospel of John was written. Verse 30, John says, Therefore Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Next time I go through the Gospels, I'm going to go through the Gospels and I'm, I'm going to include what is called the New Testament Apocrypha as well. The ancient documents that a lot of Christians actually believe and don't even know it. I mean, a lot of pastors and a lot of Christians, you know, they believe that Peter was crucified upside down and, you know, these kind of things. They don't know that what they're believing is actually what is called the New Testament Apocrypha. A lot of Bible schools might teach you these things, but they don't tell you where, where it's from. And if they do tell you where it's from, then you just kind of slough it off. We're not going to do that. Every ancient document from this period of time, from the first century especially, or anything even close to that, we are going to read and we're going to study and we're going to talk about it. So this is awesome because Jesus did many other things. You think, wow, okay, so we've already read through 20 chapters of things that Jesus did and said. But it says here, he did many other things that's not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Yeshua is Hamashiach. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life, life that is, in his name. Now, those of you who are familiar with the Gospel of John in any way, you're probably familiar with what it says in the next chapter, where John says that Jesus did so many things that if every one of them was written down, the world would not be able to hold the books, okay? So that's a very, very important verse there. John wrote that to keep it open, okay? We also need to keep our minds open, not empty, okay, but open. An open mind, but not an empty mind, okay? And may God bless you and enlighten the eyes of your understanding to see great and mighty things. And yes, may God enlarge the tent of your understanding, enlarge your mind for you to think in a way that you never thought before concerning the things of the Lord. A lot of Christians, they don't say it, of course, and they wouldn't believe it either. But a lot of them, they got God so confined, you know, in their mind. They don't know a whole lot of anything, really, except for just their favorite little scriptures here and there. And they got God so locked up. We're not going to do that, okay? We are going to let God be God, and we are going to look at every possible aspect of the Scriptures. Thanks again for listening, and don't forget to check back because I'm continually posting new content. May God enlighten the eyes of your understanding to see great and mighty things in the name of Yeshua.